All right, so it's Saturday now. I think the last video I put up was about Tuesday of this week. Um, I think today's the 9th of November 2019. Um, so I got my rental compressor return. I was going to go over, I was looking for my Amesville catalog, and then we got another one in the mail. Um, I usually buy Amesville about once a year, so every time I have to pay the membership fee, it's 20 bucks. But anyway, um, so from Davey, um, they recommended a 30 weight non detergent, non synthetic. Now, I don't know when this compressor was serviced. I don't know when, you know, when it was last, uh, you know, changed. There does seem to be some sediment on the oil. We'll get into that in a second. But they have two different types of oil. So what they have here, now, I, and I got different answers. Um, Davey gave me a 30 weight non detergent, non synthetic. Could they're concerned about particle shearing with the synthetic. That's a kind of above what I, my understanding. But so you can see, using compared acquire ISO 100 SAE 3040. Now I think ISO 46 ISO 100 is um, a hydraulic oil reference. Could be wrong. Um, so we have the PCK and a PCIQ. Um, and so the PCK is what I what I end up buying. This particular compressor, um, according to Davey, takes six gallons of oil. So, um, so what we've got here are two five-gallon buckets or ten gallons of PCK oil. Um, and then the other thing that they were able to find for me, which was nice, uh, was a filter. And they were able to get that within a couple weeks in most places as a special order filter. So, let's take a look. Um, so that's the separator. That's these are just a couple of bungee cords. That's where the um, where I've got to drain the separator, the oil. I got to break the hydraulic line down here and drain it out of the radiator as well. Um, we got to put the starter back on. Um, I didn't get other, any other speed parts for this thing, so we got to drain that. Um, there is a drain on the bottom. Probably know that's oil fill, so what I normally I do is about once a week, once every couple weeks, depending on how the compressor is running, I'll check, pull that plug, make sure the tongue is level, and check the oil. Um, you know, the other reason I might say is, well, why run Ames oil? Well, this equipment's old, it's not getting any newer. Um, oil regulations or I guess standards have changed a little bit, so I'm gonna put the best in I can. I don't have money to rebuild the compressor all the time. Um, the oil, I think, was, I mean, it might be about $500 into it by the time I get done, maybe a little bit more, but uh, according to Davey, I only need to change it every 500 uh, hours. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is, I've got a key to ignition switch, just something I grabbed at Napa. Um, with that, we're going to mount up here. So I think what happened is, these are both dead, but I think what happened was, um, you can see there's one hose sitting in here. There's parts in here right now, but I think what happened is one of the hoses either bumped this and then kicked it, or I don't know if it's possible just to kick that and then just sit there and just burn the starter up, but I think that's probably what happened as to why we burned up the starter. So we're gonna put a key to ignition switch in so it can't turn on unless it has a key in it and it's cranked. Um, so that's kind of where out of things you guys have seen the starter since I got that back. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna do anything. The I thought I'd get a big piece of heat shrink or something and putting it over this to take these terminals since they are exposed on the other side. I don't know if I'm gonna do anything with that. I've got some extra oil. I got some new coolant. Coolant doesn't look bad, but we're gonna just change it anyway. Um, so that's all I got for now. I'll bring you guys back once everything's back together.